And that'd be your prayer right now. Just give me Jesus. All I want is more of Jesus. More of you, Lord. And less of us. More of you. And less of us. Sweet Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place, O oh Lord. Jesus, you are welcome in this place. Your word says that you, you inhabit the praises of your people. That word inhabit means to make a dwelling place, to set up a tent and to camp out there. When God notices his people praising him, in spirit and in truth, genuine love and worship and adoration for him in his holy name, he pulls out his tent and he sets up camp and says, I want to stay here for a while with my children because it's real, it's relationship, and it's not religion. Jesus. We need more of Jesus. The world needs more Jesus. The world is dark. It's growing cold in these last days. The Antichrist spirit is bolder and louder than ever. Increased wickedness and perversion across the globe like we've never seen before. You may have noticed a few weeks ago in the opening ceremony of the 2024 Olympics, the holy Passover night of the Last Supper reenacted by a host of drag queens and a transgender and a singer that was portraying the Greek god of wine representing the blood of Christ. Jesus said in the last days, things that are right will be called wrong and things that are wrong will be called right. We are living in an age of wickedness and perversion, much like the days of Noah as Jesus prophesied. If we had time this morning, I would show you a cartoon that Amazon came out with, a little, I think a little over a year ago, where it retells the creation story. Except in this story, Satan is misunderstood and he is made the hero in the story. And his daughter Eve, the daughter of Satan, used as a tool to bring basically a sinful redemption to the earth for kids. If you call yourself a believer and you don't think that the times that we're living in are more wicked and perverse than it's ever been, your head is in the mud and you have to wake up. The church has to not be asleep in these last days, but we have to be awake. We have to be alert and be sober-minded and aware because the enemy, he is, he is ro roaming about seeking whom he may devour, seeking whom he may deceive with his lies and his deception, calling those things that are light, dark, and dark, light. And in these next few weeks, we have so many of our students that are going to be going back into the schools and teachers and administrators, support staff. You're going into the dark as missionaries. So you have to ask yourself, we have to ask ourselves as believers in these dark days that we're living in, when we're so close to the return of Christ, what are we supposed to do?
What, what are we really supposed to do in these last days? And you can see it very clearly in Matthew chapter five. We've been talking these last few weeks about how we're, we're supposed to shine. It's our time as the church to shine. And Matthew, in Matthew chapter five, he says, you're here to what? To be a, a light. Yes. Bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. He says, if I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm, I'm putting you on a light stand. And now that I've put you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, do what? Shine. 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 It's dark in these last days. It's dark. And the, you know what? The darker it gets, the brighter the church of Jesus Christ can shine where we can glorify the name of Jesus. You know what we need? We need to shine. The only way we're going to shine is with more Jesus. <laughs> more Jesus. This is not the time for us as believers to shrink back. This isn't, a, Christians are not called to be cowards. We're called to be fearless. We're called to stand up and stand out and to be bold and unashamed and unafraid to speak the truth. Not to condemn, not to judge, not to criticize, but to love. Listen, it is God's job to judge. It is the Holy Spirit's job to convict. It is our job to love. We have to love like Jesus in these dark days like never before. We have to show them by our actions, through our attitude, through our behavior, through the way we walk and the way we live that Jesus is real. His love is real because he is shining bright in our lives each and every day. Amen. So at this time, here's what we want to do. We want to invite all of the students to come and make your way up front. Don't anyone go and sit down. Just students, you just make your way to the front right now. All students of every age in this room, if you're going to college, come on. You're going into vo vocational school, come on. Grade school, students of all ages, come. Teachers, come. Administrators, come. Uh, support staff, bus drivers, come. Come, come, come. Make your way down. This church believes in you. This church believes that you're going into the dark. And this is crucial in these last days that you shine yeah. and you be a light. Yeah. So we're gonna pray for you. We pray that God would bless you, that God would anoint you, that you would say what needs to be said, that you would do what needs to be done every single day. Sweet Holy Spirit, if you would raise your hands, students and teachers and staff members, raise your hands in church, stretch your hands towards them right now. Sweet Holy Spirit, Misty. Father God, we thank you, Jesus, that even though we are living in the darkest of days, God, we know that the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us. God, and we pray right now, Jesus, God, over every student, over every teacher, God, over every support staff, God, getting ready to go back into the greatest mission field in the U.S. God, I pray right now, God, that a boldness and a courage come over them that they have never known. God, I pray that they would shine brighter than they can even imagine. God, I pray when they walk into the halls of their school that people feel the presence of God as they walk by. God, I pray for revival to begin in our schools, God, with Gen Z. God, I pray, Jesus, right now, God, that we would see something different happen this school year, God, in college campuses around the world. God, I pray, Jesus, that we would begin to go after you, God, more than we do anything else. God, we need you, Jesus. 